Hello to all of our BPTV fans, Facebook fans, YouTube fans, and new fans. I'm Alan Levine, The Talking Machine, co-host and co-producer of an award-winning show, Maria's Ideas Teaches Us to Paint. It's our 14th show. our guest well today I would have to say he's my favorite artist in the world <laughs> the elusive who is this and we're Jono's art studio who is this el elusive Jono well I think today you'll get to we'll get the answer to that question who are you hi guys welcome I'm Jono Prasik and here is my wifey Maria <laughs> of Maria's ideas uh, welcome to our studio on top of the historic south side slopes of Pittsburgh PA Jono's Art Studio. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been here 24 years. Um, I, my medium is I get sand from the Nongahela River and I use enamel paints. So this is totally different out of my wheelhouse and I'm going to be taught uh, by my lovely wife Maria and my good friend Alan and I'm looking forward to not using sand and acrylics. I've never used them before. These brushes I've never used. <laughs> And, uh, but I love, I love chicken, I love fowls and a rooster, so I'm looking forward to that. And also, uh, this show, um, I'm honored to have it filmed in my studio here. I, I'm usually the gatekeeper, the key master, and stage boy, so it's nice to be on this side here. So mm -hmm. uh, let's have fun today and uh, maybe we'll all learn something. So the inspiration for this episode <laughs> is the rooster. Now if you see this painting behind me, this it was painted by Jono on his mother's noodle board where she used to make the homemade noodles, but it was originally a draftsman's table that his father repurposed. Then they cleaned it and all sanded it, did whatever. His mother used it for how many years? Almost 50 years. Okay, made bread That's and impressive. noodles. Growing so you up can in see the, the, cuff, the night uh, cut marks on it. So Jono painted it whenever there's mom and dad moved out of the house and he didn't want to do with it but he didn't want to get rid of it so we painted it yeah. so he painted the rooster and that is the inspiration for today his his dad's name was joe and the rooster is standing on a cup of joe or coffee or and he the reason he's not crowing yet is um the, he just didn't have his coffee yet. That's that was how I'm seeing this. So usually when you see a rooster, that's the background and stay, story. Lot, you know, you yeah. see him on a fence yeah. or something. I put him on the cup, the cup, and it kind of ties in the Joe and the rooster and all that. So anyway, that's what we're going to paint today. Are you ready, guys? Absolutely. You ready we're to paint ready. with the uh, regular acrylic One exception. Mm. I don't drink Joe. I drink loose leaf green tea. There you go. So that's what it I'm could picturing. Be anything there. Anything you want inside the cup. Sip by sip, the better. Health. I drink tea and coffee, yeah. so I'm covered in air. Okay. So let's both. go. All right, let's go. We'll get your glasses on. Yeah, so I'm you a glass guy. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we are going to start All with right, our half, half inch, half inch. Okay, flat that's this one. Brush. Got it. Okay. We wet it. Dip wet it in it. the water. Okay. And then just dry the extra okay. water off. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the background as usual. But we're going to do this a little differently. We're going to paint wet on wet. So we want to keep the colors mixing into the next color. So just take a generous amount of yellow and yellow. put it right on the canvas. Because the yellow is at, it's right above the, the mountains here. And just put some blobs. See what I'm doing here? Put some blobs of yellow on there. Okay. And then let's take a little bit of orange and put some above the yellow. Just like that. Some dots. And I have the swirly shapes in the sky just for this is fine. Guide. Yeah. So and that and so here we go. So now blend them, just blend them, and then you can like I know Jono, when you paint you tend to have like a lot of. Can like, I add white? You can do whatever you want. Oh, thank sure. you. Sure. Okay. If you want to. Awesome. It's usually no restrictions. The, yeah, and you can see on this I'm leaving the paint a little thicker, and you can see the texture in the paint. And I just want to move that over a little bit. There you go. And you can see I'm coming across here. I'm holding the brush. I'm just pushing the brush down on the canvas and then pulling my arm. And that's a nice way to cut in. And you can see when you do this, how nicely they blend together because they're all, acrylics dry really quickly. And um, so that's it. So, and then we're going into 
from the orange will go into the red and then the purple and the blue. So, and you can see I'm kind of coming around here on that swirly section to get some interest in the sky. So you can kind of follow follow that. And that's pretty much it. And then just work your way up. Wow, you have a lot of paint on your canvas there, buddy. Um I'm used to sand, guys, and I, <laughs> look, I'm, I, no, do not touch, do not touch. So. You can put some in there if you want. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, and then this yeah, my comes all the way down too. to here, Yeah. and then we want it to be able to dry, so we might want to just smooth it out a little bit so it'll dry, but you can see Jono puts a lot of texture. I'm a day dripper. Yeah, and then so I'm <laughs> going <see>. into... <laughs> <laughs> I've been called worse. Whatever that means, I don't know. And Painter. then... Yeah, and then you can see here to cut in around the feathers of the rooster, I'm just turning my brush just a uh, little. I can't help it. i got to go in there. Sorry. In the sand. Uh, okay, Okay, yeah. put some sand in there. Mm. Okay. And then just work your way up into some red while the orange is wet. You okay over there, Alan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I needed more yellow. But so you, okay, so you mixed your colors together. We're kind of keeping them. And yeah, that's fine? I, no, it's good. Do whatever you want. I'm more uh, strong and bold on that, so I just combined them up. Okay. So what we want to do is transition from one color to the next, just to give that um, impression maybe that the sky is, well, it should be rising in this case. And you could see I'm leaving some brush strokes. Yeah, that looks good, Jono. And John, oh. uh, you have a couple favorite brushes you like to use, right? Which are not here. No, I, a fan brush and a striper. And then yeah. at times my, my uh, gloves on, my fingers or other things I can grab, but I really yeah. am a fan of the fan brush. Yeah. And also with chickens, um, they are, they're an animal group birds and they are descendants of the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. uh, which is fascinating to me. And I've, all my life, I, uh, we had a pet chicken, uh, we, with the fancy chicken breed, we had a rooster named Hilda in Dormont. Which is the inspiration it's for the for painting in the back. Back That's there. Hilda. Yeah. And it was funny yeah. because the, the, the chickens have uh, feathers all over their head and their feet. And it looks like a Phyllis Diller. I'm of a certain age. I remember <laughs> her. And it just every time we had, we just laugh. And it was... Um, you uh, young uh, folks are going to have to Google Phyllis Diller to see who that is, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I, yeah. And I, and I love, I've always been fascinated by chickens. I painted many of them. I, I just, I'm fascinated. I think they're beautiful birds. And um, we had a pet rooster one time, and uh, it's a, that's part of my little but history. But the rooster had a female, the rooster was named Hilda? Yeah, I'm not, okay. we, and there was family lore. We don't know how that happened. My dad was a stockbroker, and he had a lot of clients. There was no Hildas in the family on <laughs> either side. Nobody from Dormont named Hilda. No team named Hilda. Like a guy named and, Sue, and a, a rooster a named, named, Hilda. named Sue. A boy yeah. named Sue. Years ago, I had a conversation with my dad, and I said, can you please find out how to Hilda? We had pictures yeah. of Hilda. Nobody could find how that name was. So it's part of the Prasic family lore. That's funny. Wow. Okay, I just wanted to just let you in on this little tint here. Yeah. Little tip. As I'm coming up and I'm tra transitioning into the other colors, yeah, what, you might have to clean the brush. So now, Alan, yeah. you can go right into the purple. Oh. You don't have to clean the brush oh. because we're going from light to dark. So I can go and as the, the colors mix. Oh, I can use the purple then. Yeah. So then go into the purple and then you'll get some other kind of uh, like a I needed that guidance. little auburn tones in there and then as you as you blend if you feel like you want another bit of a color to show up then just go back over so I'm going into the my blue now and I want the truer blue so I did clean my brush so that I can see that blue and then you can add some white to any of these to tint the color when you add white to any paint any color that's called a tint if you add black darker color that's called a shade of that color so if yeah. you add I'll add a little bit of the blue here you can see that's a tint of that color and that kind of brings it together nicely too and then when you come in around the rooster again you can just turn I'm just turning my brush sideways putting the corner of the brush in there or you could just grab a smaller brush too it's up to you and then I'm coming up just with that blue all the way around it'll be it might be a little bit tricky I just accidentally covered up a little bit of his comb on his head, but I will bring that back. And then just come around. You want to see some some life in these brush strokes. So add some white, add some of the blue again as it's coming around and follow. If you follow some of these swirls here, it just makes it kind of Van Gogh inspired too, which I know John O that's one of your favorite artists, right? Van Gogh and Picasso. Uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's I'm a Salvador Dali guy. And him too. They're all of them. Um, and how did you start painting? Um, I mean, I know the I know the answer to that, but we'll 
you can tell her. Yeah, tell the folks. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm 64 now, but I was uh, age 13. I came down with a horrible case of ulcerative colitis that lasted 10 years, a horrible disease. Um, and it uh, almost did me in, but luckily I had a, a wonderful family and friends. I got through it. Um, age 23, um, I had life-saving surgery, uh, a permanent ileostomy that saved my life. And, wow. and I'm lucky, I had a second chance. And uh, so what I did, I, I was between convalescing, all the hospital visits for 10 years and everything else, I, um, I went to Dormont Library and I got books on Van Gogh and Picasso. And I no, copied wow. at the time. And my dad's garage, I had, they just had Rust Oleum. I never had any art lessons, so I copied Van Gogh's and Picasso's in Rust Oleum. Uh, um, I guess if I was going to be a musician, I would copy the Stones or Beatles in my era. Yeah. And then if I figure I, I could be decently, then I met uh, people in my life, uh, professionals, that said, quit copying, paint from your yeah. heart, your dreams. Uh, and I got a lot of books on art and just went to museums, just, you know, just got right. myself. Um, then go to school, and then. Um, so you weren't school taught. No, I was not. And then, uh, but something always told me to paint. Wow. When I met him, he was using Rust Oleum paint, and he was cleaning his brushes with gasoline. Oh my God! So then, if the colitis didn't kill me, the he gasoline would roll up the rags and throw them in a ball in the corner. I'm like, do you know what the word combustible means, buddy? Yeah. And I said, no, you got it. So he he switched from from that to some other. Enamel yeah, more healthy, and yeah. Things. yeah. Yeah. So safer. Got, enamel, How about safer? Yeah. And, and you were painting a, f a lot of very dark, dreary colors because Rust Oleum at that time didn't come in no. as many. I didn't colors, know any better, so. but I just went there and I yeah. got a better color palette and a safer palette with enamel paints. Yeah. And then I introduced uh, sand. Uh, in the art world, there's no rules. So I decided, mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm a Pittsburgher. Uh, I love the name of Hello. Uh, river sand, and uh, so that's where I have, I have special places where I go down and get it for right. the last 40 years. Wow. Um, and it's very gravelly and pebbly. It's, there's a sample right here, yep. guys. And then people commission John O to do originals, and they'll bring uh, sand from a vacation spot or their place. They have a home somewhere. Um, you've done paintings with sand from all around the world, which is pretty interesting. Well, and tell them about your pirate p paintings. Uh, been honored. Uh, I've been commissioned by all three sports teams. In we'll Pittsburgh. get to that too in okay. a minute. Yeah, uh, you've pirates, done so many great um, things. Yeah, the, uh, a couple years ago, I did the kids poster, uh, which was awesome. Um, the Pirates kids poster. They reproduced that twenty thousand times. Um, my name is spelled right. The website is good. <laughs> what an and, honor! And it's a, a it's a vertical uh, painting with uh, the baseball is the sun, and it was very popular. I'm quite honored. Um, yeah, I played baseball uh, in Dormont. Um, up to Legion Ball. They have a great, I love baseball. Yeah, me too. Uh, it was bigger than football back in the day, Alan. Yeah, you know, that generation. we grew up with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and especially Clemente to segue yeah, uh, into what you uh, did with yeah. Clemente. How about I saw him play twice. Uh, I was 10 years old at Forbes Field. Um, the baseball players were gods to us, but there was something different mm -hmm. about Roberto. Yeah. And, and, um, mm -hmm. and I, I did a painting that the original hangs in the Clemente Museum, but also now it's at the uh, there's a bench there too, or something. Yeah, uh, they have it on metal now at PNC Park permanently. It's four feet by six mm -hmm. uh, on metal, and I'm quite honored as a Pittsburgh and a fan. Yeah. To do that, so. Yeah. Well, with sports, you're right in my uh, wheelhouse there. Tell me about your Art Rooney painting. Oh wait, can I just interrupt yeah, you yeah, for one sec? Yeah. I just want to give you the next step, and then you guys can go back to that. That looks yeah. great, by the way. You guys are both doing a great job. Okay, so we I filled in the sky. And um, as it dries, I might want to add a couple other little layers or something, yeah. little hints of, of maybe bring out one of the other colors. But what we're going to do now is mix a green. We have yellow and blue, make green, and we're gonna mix a green for the bottom. So what we're doing is getting in our, our colors on the background. So you can see here, I'm mixing yellow and blue. If you want it to have it a little lighter, you could add some white acrylics do dry a little darker so if you like the the color that you mixed you might want to add a touch of white to it because it will dry a little darker so mm -hmm. and i'm just coming in with the green and i'm just doing some very quick brush strokes horizontal brush strokes you can you know up and down like it's grass you can do whatever you want but i'm going to put a little bit more yellow here maybe a little bit more of the yellow in the upper portion of the mm -hmm the grass as if the sun is shining on it. Awesome. Right okay. here, oh, you can okay. see okay. that. On the left. Right. Yeah, or either side, but just to show, because our, our light source, which, thank you, Alan, for the reminder, our light source is coming from the left side. See, so the shadows, something. yes, the shadows are on the right side. 
And so we have this in here. And then what we're going to do is switch to a smaller brush. And John, I could see to go around him, you yeah. can you just grab a smaller brush. Okay. That's all. Okay. So what we're going to do is switch to, uh, this is, oh, I don't like that one, a quarter inch filbert. So it's a little brush. And what we're going to do is on this rooster, you see he's mostly in silhouette because that sun is behind him, but we're still adding some color, but we're going to add the color first. We're just gonna do this a little bit differently mm -hmm. and then you'll see how it comes together. Mm -hmm. So after you finish your background right. here and there, okay. we're taking the smaller brush and we're just gonna lay in some colors. And now keep in mind that the direction of your brush strokes, you want to paint them the way the feathers lay on the rooster's body, right. okay? And the light source is from the left, so there's mostly the yellow on the left side of the the breast of the rooster and I'll put some up in here okay. put a little bit up in here and then I'm just going to mix in just while it's wet I'm just going to this is very colorful rooster I forget the name of this um, rooster is it a Banty rooster? No, I'm not sure the, um, the color I, I I'm not real sure I should have checked on that it's a very colorful um, rooster. yes yeah, so there are <laughs> roosters that have these colors so you can see how but I'm leaving some of this white because that's where the black is going to be. So I went into yellow and orange, and we're going to actually cover some of this up too. But up here, now I'm going to put his little comb back in. All right, and then we will highlight that too. This is cool, thank you. Yeah, and then, um, so I'm just going to keep painting here a little bit, and then I'll go into the, the uh, coffee cup. But um, I'll just pick up the pickle when I'm ready to go to the next thing. So you can go ahead and pick up your story about the, um, you were talking about Clemente or the... Oh, we were going to go to Steelers. Yeah, that, uh, right. five of my prints, I'm honored uh, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The Art Rooney, Heinz Field, Steelers Sunday, Terry Bradshaw and Three River Stadium. Yeah. Uh, and they, have, they accepted him 20 years ago and I'm quite honored as a Pittsburgher and yeah. a fan to be in the Hall, Pro Football Hall of Fame and they rotate him in the exhibit. Um, and uh, how that, that came great. about, that's the one that put me on the map in the year 2000. Um, it was a bartender at Mario's in the South Side, and uh, they had my artwork on the wall. And the Steeler marketing people, unbeknownst to me, saw my work. And um, I was uh, this is a year before Heinz Field opened up. So Mr. Rooney, Dan Rooney, God rest his soul, uh, he uh, he gave me a shot. He I came in for an interview, and they, they hired me to do the painting of Heinz Field, and that put me on the map as far as in Pittsburgh here. And I have not looked back since then. And, um, how cool is that? That is the coolest. Um, growing up is a, a Thanks fan. for sharing that. Yeah. I've been impressed and we're friends. Yeah. Who would believe two Keystone Oaks High School <laughs> graduates? That's right. Yeah. We're KO guys. painting. We're KO. Right, That's right, right, right. Okay, so you could see what I did here on the, the rooster. I just started, just kind of throw the colors in because it really doesn't matter how you have them in there as far as the detail because we're going to bring out the detail when we paint the black. So okay. I'm just... I'm keeping the, the colors lighter on the left side and then underneath in the lower portions, it's a little bit darker. You can put some purple, mm -hmm. you can put some blue. You can have fun with this. It's just mm -hmm. a very colorful rooster. And then um, his little legs, that'll all get done with the, the black. Mm -hmm. So we have, you can see how I, yep, you have your green down there. And then the mountain, that we'll, we'll, we'll do that when we do all the black. But the coffee cup right now, I'm going to mix brown. So does anybody know how we get brown with the colors that we have? And we do have white, red, we have a violet, blue, orange, yellow, and black. Anybody know you how start, to get brown? Well, you, if you don't have brown, you don't start with brown. I would say you probably have a- How are we gonna a, make brown? If you've had a cream color or a white. <laughs> no, we're gonna make, well, I'm, I'm, no, I mean- I'm, This is so opposite what I do. No, I mean, we're making brown. So we take the, the primary colors, the red, red yeah. blue, and yellow. Right, yep. red, blue, and yellow. And we've done that if, before, Maria. Yes, so we have. I, so I was you, just quiet so Jono could speak. Oh, yeah. no, it's fine. No, I mean, he knows how to mix colors, but he doesn't, he I'm doesn't- just, I just think, because I'm so different from what yeah, I do, he just, but- takes his brown paint. Anyway, so you can see here, I mix red, blue, and yellow. If you want it to be a warmer brown, add more yellow. Okay, so I have a nice little, oops, now that red got mixed in there. Okay. So a nice warm brown, and I'm coming in here and I'm painting the cup. The upper portion, this is a lighter, a little bit lighter brown, okay. And 
Then we'll make it, I'll add a little bit of black to it and make this a little darker down here. So we have like that little, that little piece that goes around the, the cup when you, you know, the, there's that little, little section here. We'll create that. And let's see. And then we're going to paint the lid. We'll do that white. So right now we're just keeping this like a brown, lighter brown and a darker brown at the bottom. And then we are going to clean our brush and take white. And we're going to paint. You can see I'm just holding the brush this way. And there's still a little bit of blue on my brush. And that's okay because we can, if it's a dirty white, that's all right because we will add some white highlights once it's blocked in. So we're blocking in the, the lid. But we're not doing all the detail on it yet. Okay. So we're just doing that there. Mm -hmm. So red, blue, and yellow to make your brown. And right. then do the, the cup part and then the top. Alan, you're good over there? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little behind. No, there's that's no, okay. There's no rolls. Okay. So we have this all blocked in. Now we're going to grab the black paint. Now this is where we're going to create we're going to just bring this all together because right now it's kind of messy looking and it just looks like right that looks really cool alan look at his i too i love his style too <laughs> alan has a style all his own i love it <laughs> all right so we are going to grab i'm grabbing that half inch brush again and we are coming in and we're covering up we're going to cover up some of those those uh brush strokes when you were a kid did you ever have one of those it was a board that was black, but when you scratched it, it revealed color underneath. Yeah, yeah. I did and we used to make our own. We would take crayons and put all the colors and then cover it with black and scratch them off. Well, that's kind of what this reminded me of when I was designing this. So even though we put the color there, we're going to cover up some of it. So we're coming in with the black and we're just outlining. Now we're outlining the rooster and we're coming around and we're just blocking this in but we're going to hold the brush vertically and, and pick it up to create like this brush stroke here. Wow. See, I'm pushing down and lifting up. Right. And what that's doing, it's leaving a little tail on the, that brush stroke, which will create the kind of illusion of, of the feathers. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to just kind of come in like that. Now I'm covering up some of the feathers the colors on the feathers, but that's okay because we want that color to look like it's like underneath and in between, and we can still add a little bit more color to it anyway. And we're just that's gonna, awesome. Yeah, and you can see I'm just going like this, letting the brush, keeping the brush strokes the direction that the feathers are on his tail, and then there's some that come around this way, this way, and then I will grab a smaller brush once we get. I'm going to grab a smaller brush pretty soon, so I'm going to get his little body here, and then I'm going to go up this way. So now I'm going to grab, let's see, this is a little liner brush, little round liner brush. If your brush is very stiff, it has a, a glue in there from when they ship brushes, and it keeps them nice and, and um, shaped, so you can just rinse it off with water. Mm -hmm. And you can see here I'm coming in. I'm outlining. I still want to make sure I have that yellow on his his breast too, because the sunlight is hitting. And we'll add some little highlights too. My black is kind of gooey. Look at all that. If yours is too, just add some water. It's kind of like lumpy on my brush. And what's that little that little thing that comes out on the back of their their leg? Oh, it's uh, the spur. Spur. Hey, I mean, uh, a note on that: the uh, the roosters they have the spurs, and they're very dangerous. Uh, yeah. Maria, his, his brother, her brother is a master carpenter, and over the years, I've been fortunate to learn off him and watch him work. Yeah. He 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 is such a master carpenter. He always says he could put socks on a rooster. Wow. <laughs> so think about that. I, I love that terminology, with not only in carpentry but he's everything. very he's an artist with trying to put socks on regular feet, then trying to put on with spurs on. I, <laughs> That always stopped me in my tracks. That's funny. I can't even picture that. I know. Think of it. He could put socks on a rooster, and I saw him. He did. <laughs> he so. doesn't. He doesn't brag about no, his but own just, work, but he. Just we've an seen, interesting. He's uh, very part of very that trade. Uh, you know. yes. Wasn't he the one that hooked up our 
camera set up, the yes. Andy Amron yeah. set up for yes. us. Yeah, so right above us. Yeah. Shout out to Andy and your brother. Yep. Yeah, they figured it out. You're able to see Maria's ideas teaches us to paint <laughs> correctly. Mm -hmm. That's right. No rules. So you can see he's really, he's really dark. We're going to go in with some of our highlights again, but he's in silhouette pretty much because that sun is coming up behind him. And then I'm just detailing. We didn't zoom in on his head, but I think you can figure out how to get his little, mm -hmm. his little face done. And then there's a lot of red on the face. And then the, the, um, his beak will have, I'm blocking it in first with the black and then I will highlight it. And then his little eye going to go around here and then we make sure we have a little highlight mm -hmm. around his eye and I'm going to put some little bit of yellow a little bit of whoops, that black yeah this black paints very thick for some reason mm -hmm. all right so we're going to put a little bit of yellow and maybe and some orange just add whatever colors you want right this is art this is your interpretation of the rooster make it fun this is our advanced art yeah. artwork and just have fun with it you know it doesn't have to look like mine it shouldn't look like mine this is, is one it? of the few paintings marie and i've collaborated on over the years yeah i mean oh wow i'm she, honored everybody you know it's a snowflake everybody's different she has uh she's so diverse in her artwork and i have mine but it's you know we've collaborated on different things but this is really unique so i don't even know how you paint with some of the brushes that you paint with well, they're just there's like, no rules i know just, just funny looking. This is the family of no rules. Yeah. <laughs> I'm noticing a pattern no, no, here. Nobody's incarcerated as far as we know. Well, that's good. Yeah, there you go. That's right. No rules. Just have fun. If you're having fun, that's what matters. I'm having too much fun. All right. So I have him blocked in. I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I put some highlights to make everything pop. And then I can see here where his body meets the sky. I kind of feel like this needs to be a little bit brighter in here. So you could see, you could come in with some other little brush strokes with your smaller brush if you want a little more orange or red and then I'm going back to the larger brush to do the mountains with the black because that is also in silhouette and then that brings us around cut in around and you you can see how I'm kind of shaking my brush a little I don't want that the perfect perfect straight line because that would be there'd be trees back in there maybe or something that would give it a little bit of some interest not just a smooth black line and then you can see how by putting this black on here now that's making the sky pop okay because of the contrast and I'm just blocking this in coming in and up to the cup and then we will just put some little details on our cup bring this here and you can if you want to you can even mix in a little bit of color in this in the mountains if you choose but I'm just leaving mine pretty dark there and then while I have that black on my brush I'm going to just lightly trim the cup and I'm going to grab my oops grab my little brush again the little round brush and do all these little details now I'm going to take my black I have black in a separate little tray here. I want this very thin, more like an ink, inky consistency so that it will move across the canvas for me. The canvases have a lot of texture. And then what we're going to do is come in just with the tip of the brush and just lightly mm -hmm. come in and just create that little shape. And, and you can see I'm doing little dashes. I'm not worried about this being perfectly smooth um, line. I want this to look kind of artsy and and more see some more brush strokes and not worry about it being perfect. The details be perfect like a you know photograph here. We're just we're trying to be a little creative here and that's the little lip of the cup and then we have a little bit of sh this shadow here you could see here and here and then underneath a little bit more water underneath here we want the shadow under the lid you can see that and then we'll come down like this well wow. you can see I'm just pulling awesome pulling that across and down and then this would be much darker right here too but you want to leave a little bit of the highlight the reflected light on 
this side of the cup, okay? You don't want to take that black all the way over. Now my brown, oops, my brown dried. So if you just grab some water, it will reactivate the paint on your palette. So come back in here with that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of some yellow, again, like the sun hitting everything on that left side. See here, I'm putting some yellow here. Your light source, huh? Mm-hmm, from the left side. So I'm just kind of hitting that here and there. And then I will also do that up on his leg, on the um, rooster's legs. You can see here, I'll put some little highlights. And not too much on this one, it's kind of behind, just on that little, little bit right there. And then I will go back and now I can see Oops, I need a little bit of shadow right under him too, on the lid, you can see right here, because he's creating a little bit of a shadow mm -hmm. on the lid, okay? And then we'll pick up these little details with the white. All right, so he's all blocked and now you look at your painting and say, okay, what does it need? Uh, this looks very dark, so I need some little highlights. And you want to just pay attention to where you need a li some light and where you need some shadow. Uh, the light colors come forward a little bit, the dark colors mm -hmm. recede, but in this case, he's in silhouette because of the sun, so mm -hmm. we, we are keeping him much darker than normally he would be, okay? Because if you try to, if you take a picture or something outside, you can, the, the, if the light's behind it, it puts everything else in shadow. Right. All right, so what I'm doing now, because you can see here on the picture, I need some highlights on his face, just to make that pop out a little mm -hmm. bit. This can stay darker here. So our light source is on that left side. So I'm going to take my little brush. Stay, so far, we've only used our three little brushes. Make Speak sure for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice and clean. I'm taking white, just the pure white, and you always roll your brush like this to keep that nice little point because we just want to use that little tiny point. Right. And come in and pick out just some little little spots on his comb, right? It's called the, the comb, I think. Yes. Yes. And a little bit on his beak, the top part. And then a little reflection in his eye. We'll put little bit of white around his eye and just a couple little like I said little highlights just here and there you don't want too much of it but this is what's helping us determine where that light source is you can mm -hmm. see just by putting those tiny little highlights right there mm -hmm. how that kind of brought him into the foreground too because the light color right. sits in front of the dark Feel like his comb got lost a little bit. I'll add a little bit more red there. We can put some yellow or orange on his beak, and I feel like you're a great teacher, Maria. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> if, if people, I, if I people didn't pay listen. him to say that either. <laughs> I'm okay. Also, I mean, you know, I'm still learning. You know, we're right, there's all no always rules. learning. Um, the uh, sometimes I, I don't use a light. You know, there's a light source, but there's not a light source because you know I paint upside down. Paint, right? Yeah, again, this is uh, there's no. It's just it's really cool and. And, uh, Definitely different and, for you. And, and oh, too. it's amazing. And also a shout out to Dave and um, Nick on the other side here. You guys oh, yeah. are awesome. Thank you for your, your expertise and your yep. help over the year. And, um, Couldn't and, do it without you. And how about award-winning show, you guys? It's uh, yeah. 14th episode. You've won multiple awards. And um, yeah. uh, congratulations to all I involved. didn't expect that. No, I didn't, we didn't even know they existed at our end. I know. I'm honored. And look at that trophy behind us. <laughs> Maria's ideas teaches us to paint again. Uh, it's right behind me. And again. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So I blocked the black in. I'm adding my little highlights. Now I go back in. I feel like, you know what? There's a little bit too much black. I just want to, now that that dried a little, I'm just laying some color on top of the black also. We had some underneath. So wherever you want this feathers to come up, add some color. Well, that looks good. So yeah, you just need some more color in there. Right. Oh, he's very cool. Alan, I'll how are you doing on your rooster? I'll need to catch up with the body. Yeah, I've been doing No, that looks good. So just put some color on the rooster first and then okay. add the black. All right. And then now I'm just adding, like I said, I'm just adding some color because the black is going to recede. And we want some of those colors 
to pop and bring him forward. And then um, just going to look, I think, like his eye needs a little touch. And I feel like this, this part of his tail needs to pop up a little bit. I'll put some here. You can see how just putting that little bit of yellow popped it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And his little wings kind of come in here. And then, again, just look at everything. See where you need to clean something up. Um, grab some white. Maybe clean up some of these edges a little bit. Should I start at the legs and go up? With it doesn't color? matter, but we put the color on the rooster first. Okay. And then the black. And then you'll go back and add more color again. So just okay. put, see all the different colors on his body? Yes. Mm -hmm. You could do that next. All right, I can and start. And you can mix it up. It doesn't matter how you, you lay You know them I on. will, but I'll yeah. put some yellow in there and yeah, just go start in. from there. Mm -hmm. And you could see if you do some little dashes like that, kind of gives you the feeling that there's some feathers there. And let's see, we have this cup, we have like a line that comes across here. And then the cup kind of sticks out a little bit beyond, I mean the lid sticks out a little bit beyond. So we kind of bring that out there. And then this right here, this is like that little thing that they put on top of the cup to hold it so your hands don't burn, I guess. And we'll put a little, yeah, John, are you, you're, you're used to um, your paint yeah. flying. Like my, I, how I evolved as an artist, I, this is, I usually do not do this in front of people or cameras. I like locking myself in yes. the studio and just putting the radio on. I've done that for almost 40 years. If I years. walk in the studio, he stops. Stops. But Maria can paint in front of a huge audience and all yeah. that. And that's fine. And, and Alan, to each his own. But yeah. I, I stop. I just like, this is a lot this is different for me. For I'm, I'm coming out of a, a kind of a shell. <laughs> Um, that's all I'm saying. I'm honored that you're a guest on the show coming oh. out of your shell. Thanks for asking. Go K.O. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then we'll just put, so I'm pretty much just touching up. I'm, I'm feeling like this is about done here. Um, I just need to, you never, you, you always have to know when to stop though, right? <laughs> it's hard to know when to stop. Now I'm going to let this dry. I'll come back in and uh, touch it up. So we have art kits at the studio, but um, you also can go on YouTube. I have the 10 minute tutorial for every episode that teach you how to draw. You can learn how to draw and then how to paint. So that awesome. is, yeah, that's uh, Maria's Ideas Art on YouTube. So there'll be one for this. So I think I just need to let this dry a little bit like maybe some orange here and then I'll come back and see what else it needs okay all right so I think I'm gonna let it go I'm just gonna just let it dry for wow, a couple minutes that's fantastic and um, you guys are doing good yeah so, good okay so we're gonna come back and reveal the finished paintings okay awesome. thank you all right Welcome back. We are finished with our paintings, and let's reveal. You did. You guys did great. Nice job. Cock a doodle doo. I had to change my cup of Joe to a cup of green tea, and I there. couldn't fit the loose leaf green tea in, so it's tea. I like it. Yeah. What's Maria, in your cup? Thank you. Oh, you're huh? welcome. What's in your cup? Uh, lemon ginger and also decaf. Oh, right there now. you go. I'm half and half. <laughs> All right. that we got that out. Thank you so much, yeah, Maria, for our you. 14th show thank with you. a rooster on a cup of joe. Yes, cup of joe. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, everyone. Bethel Park TV. It was, a, it was a blast. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being here, Jono. Now everybody knows who Jono is. Oh, that's scary. Good scary. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our next episode, this was inspired by our next guest who I think likes gnomes and is very involved with the hilltop here. So... This will be our next episode, episode 15. And this is on the hilltop. Okay? Awesome. So thank you guys for 
watching and hopefully it's inspiring some of you to paint and maybe just get your paints back out again and um thanks Th again thanks wifey wifey thanks all of you for uh, watching your great feedback and we'll be doing our 15th show next month